Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. We're going to be changing things up. This is not part of the Outlander project. This is a new project based off of The Great on Hulu, which I binged so fast. So the inspiration for this project started when I watched a Fancy Styles fabric video and I purchased four yards of this extra wide fabric. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But I had been thinking about making a banyan because it's sort of going around the costume community now. And then I got really fixated on this green robe that Catherine wears in the grate all the time. And I basically compiled all the pictures of it I could possibly find for reference. So it does look like it's lined with a patterned fabric. It has the Watto back and it looks like it has its own set in sleeves. So I don't know what this is considered. I, I don't know if this is considered a banyan, if this is some sort of wrapper, but it's definitely not a bed gown because it's not cut out of one piece um, for the over the arms. So when deciding what pattern to go with, it wasn't going to be this kind of pattern where you don't cut out separate sleeves. Um, this is the Burnley and Trowbridge bed gown pattern that I thought maybe I would go with, but I wanted something a little more complicated. So I did buy this bed gown pattern that's a little more complicated in the back and the sleeves. And I also bought this Reconstructing History robe batante, um, which has the pleated back I was looking for. For the lining, I ended up getting some cotton sateen in this light pink from Burnley and Trowbridge, which is a super soft, nice cotton that you would definitely want against your skin. Before I started Frankensteining patterns together, I knew I wanted to wrap my head around on how to do the back pleating because that is something I'm super not experienced with, and by super not experienced, I've never done it before. So I did some awful, terrible sketches, and then I made some small pattern pieces so that I could practice the folding and understand how it all went together and that was just my scaling measurements for scaling down the pattern into the two different sizes. So really the only pattern piece I even used um, were the front panel and back panel from the Reconstructing History and for the back panel all I used was their pleating measurements which is what is on top of my wrapping paper right now is just that one half of the back panel so that I could see where their pleats would go. Trying to put this together was a little chaotic and I also remember the American Duchess has a sack back gown in theirs too which I used for reference as well but that is my back pattern piece um, that I just lengthened when I cut it out. For the front panels, my printer wasn't working to print out the Reconstructing History pattern, so I just sort of winged it, and it took a couple of tries of me estimating how much fabric I needed to go over my shoulders, because I wasn't going to put any pleats in it, and the pattern in Reconstructing History has pleats that go on the front of the shoulders, and that's not part of the robe design in, in the grate. So I had to cut that down and then still make sure I had enough room to wrap around under my arm. Honestly, it's a miracle these pieces worked out because I had no idea what I was doing. I remembered that raising the arm's eye actually gave you more movement, so I moved that up. And then another thing I had to keep in mind was that the front pieces of the robe were going to be turned back at least two or three inches. So I needed to build that width into the front panels as well. So they ended up being almost as wide as the original pattern that has the pleats in it, but I really did not want them to be too long. So I think I cut these out three different times before I was really happy with the way that they looked. To get the length for the pattern pieces, I literally laid down and marked where my heels were. Very accurate, I know. And I did the same thing for the front pieces as well. So 
Something worth noting when using a patterned fabric like this is when you're cutting out that large back piece, you want to center the pattern on the fold so that the pleats will have the mirror image of each other pattern wise on the back, which just is aesthetically pleasing, I guess. And to also make sure that the direction on the front for the pattern is the same as the direction on the back. Next up is the fun part of pleating that giant back. I started by putting the pattern piece on top of my cutout piece and marking all the places where I needed to fold the pleats. And I probably could have like numbered these, like which ones to do first, because I had a hard time remembering, but you basically do the bottom pleats first and then you do the top pleat next. And I made sure to do two layers of pins for this because I am going to be stitching down the pleating the first couple of inches, which I've seen on other people's projects. I also did want to mention that this fabric from Fancy Styles Fabric is polyester, which is what I was looking for because I want this to be a durable, wearable garment for me. And if it was silk, I would be so afraid to eat in it, cook in it, sit in it, wash it. So. I was very happy with choosing polyester, even though I know the costuming community is kind of pro natural fiber most of the time. But for me, practically, this kind of fabric made more sense and it's still beautiful. I thought I would leave the whole pleating process in here for someone who hasn't seen how the pleats are done, but I'll stop blathering on about it now. And with that, the pleating part was complete. Moving on to the lining, I got a very conservative amount of this lining fabric and nearly ran out. So I was not going to be cutting this whole back panel out, which is silly because it's pleated anyway. So I just sort of spread out the back panel um, so that the bottom was almost the full width and the top was um, much smaller than the outside fabric. This won't be a problem for hemming because they aren't going to be hemmed together. The lining is going to be free floating in the garment. And you can see here how conservative I'm being. I'm trying to make no waste. And also that second piece had to be pieced together because I needed enough to do the sleeves, which I knew were gonna be sort of big pieces although I hadn't drafted them at this point yet, so I didn't really know how big they were gonna be, I was just trying to be extra safe. To piece the fabric together, I laid it back down over another part of the fabric to cut it out so that I could cut out the missing part and then pin the pieces together that I would then sew those two pieces of lining together to create one lining piece. I don't know if that makes any sense, but see, I'm, I'm trimming that pieced part to match up with what I had already cut out and then I could just pin them together and sew them together and they would be the same size as the outside fabric. Mm -hmm. 
The initial assembly for this is super simple. You just sew the back piece to the front pieces of the lining and the outside fabric. So I don't have much footage of that because it's just straight seams on the machine, super simple. Once the lining and the outside were put together, you then put right sides facing and I pinned along the, so this is gonna be the front two parts of the robe when you put it on. And then just sew one long straight seam down it. I was toying with how to do the finishing of these seams and hindsight 2020 should have definitely 100% done French seams. I took a lot of time later on in the project finishing these off because the lining isn't going to be attached all the way around so they do need to be finished. And this polyester fabric I'm using does fray quite a bit. But see I'm leaving quite a bit of seam allowance which did help later on and I could only do that because I knew my garment was super loose fitting and these pieces were huge anyway. It then gets flipped right side out and that seam is pressed which will become the turn backs on the front of the robe. I do also fold in the folds on the front and iron them in at some point, and I don't have video footage of that, but the next time you see these attached, when the arm and the back get attached together, the folds are in there. So I did iron those in as well. I like to watch Netflix and lounge on my couch while hand sewing, so I don't have a good track record in recording that, but I did just tiny back stitch, um, prick stitches, I think is the right term, where you try to pick up the least amount of fabric on the front, and then the stitches are longer on the back side, and it leaves a really nice finish on the front. Then I sewed on a really big binding piece that I didn't know how big it was going to be at the time, so I just left it pretty long. And for this finishing, I just turned the edges and whipped them down. And then I decided how long I wanted that binding to be on the back. And I folded the inside edges in, folded it over, and then just whip stitched around on both sides. And that's gonna take a lot of stress there. So I did really a lot of stitches to hold that in place. This is where I'm going to cut off this first video. The sleeves were quite a behemoth task, so it seemed like a better place to cut off before doing the sleeves. At this point with the project, I was not super happy with it. I felt it looked very unflattering and large, so I did some things later to change it, which you'll see in the next video. So stay tuned for that.